Me. I think this week is going to be such a bore. Well, yeah, but that's it's not going to change because I, mean, I know it won't change, son. But just I'm what's glad gonna, you said it. Well, okay, now we're going to have to be out there. I've been You're going to be out it. there every day. <laughs> Three reports a day. I got to write we a couple stories a day. Week. Yeah, right. And you've got. What are you going to talk about? What are you going to write about? What are the people going to go look at? Well, that's I mean, why the drivers call it the year of May. Right. And there's six spots left, and there's ten, you know, maybe ten cars in the garage. Or it's it's really it's deteriorated it to the point where it's no show at all. And next weekend will be a colossal bore probably because even even bump day is not what it used to be. All right, Randall, you're first up on Sports Locker. Go ahead, big guy. Uh, yes, uh, in the last few years they've been talking about the speeds, how they want to be slowing them down. Instead of messing with aerodynamics and stuff, why don't they just go into overall size of the engine? That's one. I think the engine size would be one thing, but what they have to do is come up with a new formula. That's the only way it's ever going to work. And I think Tony George wants to slow the cars down. I think he's concerned. He wants to make them a lot more affordable so they can have 60 cars there instead of 40. So this week would be pretty exciting if there was right. six spots left and there was 25 cars going for that like it used to be 20 years ago. But he doesn't have the solution yet on how to do that. And I think that's one of his major concerns. All righty. I believe James is up next. Is that you, James? Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. This question is for Robin. Last week you predicted Boston to lose in four-game sweep. What do, you think of the, what do you think of them now? Um, I'd say that they're... Play, they're going to make me look pretty bad again, but I, I think uh, I did pick the Boston Celtics to sweep the Pacers, though. That's right. I did yeah, pick right. that. That was, and not too many. A lot, most people picked. Most everybody in the national publications picked the Pacers to win, but I don't know. It's, I think Cleveland and Boston two to two now. Uh, Boston's playing them tough. I, I see Larry was back today. I saw a little of the game, but I don't know. I just thought Cleveland would dust them, but Boston's playing well. Mike, go ahead. How you doing, guys? We're doing Good. great, buddy. I got a couple questions for uh, either one of you. It doesn't bother you. I'm not real choosy there. Both of you look like you got your sports knowledge. Um, one is, <laughs> you know, I compare CART to NASCAR. You're looking at the, the, the pull setter for, for CART is three mile an hour above almost second place. NASCAR is so close. I mean, do you think the IndyCar thing is getting out of hand or it's almost boring anymore a lot of times? Let me, can I say something? Well, it's your show, son. I hope so. Well, <laughs> I just want to say, other than on an oval, you give me those Winston Cup freight trains coming out of four any day. Yeah. Other than Indy cars on an oval. Right. All right. Milwaukee, Phoenix, Michigan, Nazareth, Indianapolis. Here's the thing, Mike. Um, I think qualifying, I thought there would be eight or nine guys grouped within about a mile of each other. But the way that the, the weather broke, and, the, and there were so many extenuating circumstances yesterday, it's not a good gauge. It'll be a good race. Just like Long Beach was a great race. There was sure. four cars yeah. on top of each other. Phoenix was a good race till a few people got put behind the pace car in the wrong spot. But I think any cars on an oval are still a great show. Oh. Um, any cars even on a, ro on a real road course sometimes are a good show. But uh, NASCAR is a tough show. To, it's a tough act to be. It really is. The, the other question Especially I had when... was um, Gordon Johncock. Uh, you know, I haven't heard a whole lot about the paper. hasn't been covering him much. And, you know, a lot of them think he's a country time loser. But, uh, you know, I, I'm real big on Gordon. And what's his chances of making the field this year? I mean, I, Gordy's a great guy. He's yeah. a great race driver. He's just having real, they're having a lot of problems with the engine the compartment car. and the car, and it's a it's a year old, year old car. car. And he only runs once a year because he's got to do the North Forty about three months out of the year. And I he, know it. Well, he bought him a new tractor with his prize money last, last year. Last year he finished, uh, you know, in the top ten and, and took the money and bought a new tractor. But John Cock, uh, you know, if, if the car's close, he'll make the race. All right. Well, Lee, we want you to hang with us. All right. We don't have time to get to Lee on the phones right now because. Uh, Coming up next, we've got John Paul Jr. in studio with us. But, Lee, hang on. We're going to try to get back to you. This is a ghost boy from Long John Silver. The hottest new, totally portable, fully accessorized, mega huge, way cool multi-beverage container. The flip top lid and high-tech robo straw. Thanks. Available in four excellent designs and is the extreme ultimate summertime sports accessory. Just 99 cents with any Long John's meal. But beware of imitations. Some are ghost sports from Long John's. And some are not. Go fish! Long John's Silver! Go for the $1.99 shrimp and chicken combo. And don't forget to add a piece. Howard Huber here inviting you to Huber Chevrolet's 20th anniversary of our race sponsorship. We're leading the way with our annual pace setter sale featuring $900 to $1,300 rebates on Luminous S10 Blazers and Cavaliers. 
Jupiter, Chevy, and Wish TV8 are giving away this limited edition race day print while supplies last. When you test drive any of our fine cars or trucks, including our luxurious Starcraft van line. So hurry into Huber Chevrolet today and pick up this fine poster from Channel 8 and Huber Chevrolet. Good people to go racing with. Every driver who makes it to Indianapolis has paid his dues in racing competition. Tattersall the Legend is an in-depth story of Bob Tattersall and the woman who loved and shared his 20-year racing career. From stock cars to midgets and the national championship. From sprint cars to Indy, Tattersall the Legend is racing history as well as a moving story of life in the fast lane. Auto Racing's current bestseller is more than just a great book. In it, you'll meet some of Indy's greatest drivers. You'll love Tattersall the Legend, available now at B. Dalton Booksellers. We're back on Sports Locker. I'm Fred Khalil, joined by Robin Miller of the Star and Dick Ray. And our special guest in studio tonight, John Paul Jr., who qualified for the race at over 220 miles an hour in a two-year-old car. That was a great run for you, John. Yeah, we're very proud of it. The car is old, and the motors were old and tired, and they gave us some problems all week, but we got it in there. What? Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, a lot of the people scream and moan about the Buicks because they have too much horsepower and things. I don't think they could accuse your operation of that because you don't have the Jim Wright engines. You guys... Yeah, we did them all in-house, um, rebuilding them in the garage all week, basically. <laughs> and, um, you know, Dave and Alicia, man, they, they don't have the money to do it in a, a style like Bernstein does. And we just have to make do with what we have. And Dave Mann's just a local guy that got involved three years ago, and you've been driving for him three years? Yeah, he's been coming here since he was about three years old, and he's just, you know, it's in his blood, and he loves it, and he's put all his time and effort into coming here once every year. What did you think during that qualifying run? Your first lap was over 221. I was very happy. That's about the fastest we've been all month. The motor was misfiring the whole run, and we were losing boost pressure, <laughs> and the speeds did drop, but it, it held together, so we'll take it. John, what would motivate a driver to want to wanna ride in this kind of a situation? I know obviously you've won some big races. You won the Michigan 500. Is it just your love of being at Indianapolis? Well, I've made some mistakes and cost me, you know, a good chance at some very competitive rides out there um, back when I first started. And I'm trying to make a comeback, and you have to take what's available so people at least see your face and know that you have the potential to do well. And I think everyone knows we have very outdated equipment here, and we did get it in on the first day. And I think it has the potential to run a 218 all day. I know we'll get hosed by the quick guys, but... You know, we could be fifth at the end of the day, and that's what we're looking to obtain. What about, John, what about the last year or two? I mean, you were fast and you were a great road racer, and then you win the Michigan 500 your first year with, with Phil Casey and VDS. Did you not pursue any IMSA rides this year? Or, I mean, this is, your, is this your only ride right now for the, for the whole season? Yeah, I've done some IMSA racing, but there's no full-time efforts there either. And in IMSA's particular case, they've cut it back to a one driver series two hour format races it used to be endurance racing and they only need one guy and there's not as many rides there as available and the recessions hurt it in in regards of all racing so it's really tough to find a full-time ride i try to keep it in perspective because ari has not a full-time ride and and he's won the race here so exactly. i just keep you know trying to bust my gut and do the best job i can with what's out there and and keep on trying but at the age of 31, too, you, it's not like you, I mean, you still got a lot of time left. Yeah, well, time's on my side right now. <laughs> it wasn't too long ago I was 24 and, and doing very well. Hopefully we can turn it around and, and keep getting good rides. It seems like a long time ago since you broke your leg. It really does. <laughs> and just think of the things you've learned about Indianapolis and the, I mean, I suppose it's, it's, it's so encompassing when you first come here and you're just like, wow, I'm just happy to make the race or, you know. Yeah, um, Redmond at one time told me, you know, there's no old bold drivers out there, and I'm about in the middle now. I've got some, <laughs> I got some boldness to me, but I've got a lot of experience under my belt, and that pays off. And I think doing all the endurance racing is good for these 500 miles. I've done a lot of endurance racing, so I know how to c keep a car together and stay out of trouble. I mean, the uh, luxury of getting in the field the first day. I'm just curious, what uh, what did you do today? 
Um, I took all the crew guys up to Dave Mann's place he has out in the country, and we ran his go-karts out there all day. And <laughs> <laughs> we listened on the radio to what everyone was doing had a good time. Do you guys have a speed that you wouldn't have taken? 220 was the bottom, and we were just lucky it averaged out there. The last few laps were 19s, and, and John Dick, who helped us all month, oh, engineered right? the car, and he said take it, so we did. Backup car, which is actually quicker, ran some quicker laps. We have that as an option if we need it, but it looks like it's a solid 220. It's going to stay. The, oh, yeah, I don't think that's going anywhere. Well, you wouldn't think so, would no. you? No. You always wonder. I mean, you're always scared to death. Someone I mean, last year, this guy was, yeah, last year this guy was, yeah, last year this guy was saying four laps, and you end up getting guys <laughs> You going. heard what Al Unser said. I don't know what I'm talking about anyway, but do, do cars, have, have people come up to you in the last, I mean, of course, you were go-kart racing today, but, uh, you know, other car owners say, hey, John, you know, hang around you know we're going to be changed there might be some changes next year or people come up to you and say hey good job in this deal or do you think yeah i think a couple of people you know mentioned that we did very well with what we had and and they watch they know what you're doing and in my particular case i know i have to you know a, a lot to bear so i just have to hopefully when they have a time then they need a change they'll think about me and and take a chance on me because i can do the job and and i will work harder if i get the opportunity to you know, make this all right in the end. But see, I think, and you were really honest. I, I mean, when you when you went away and came back after serving your time, and people in auto racing embraced you like I mean, I don't think anybody has any ill feelings towards you. I don't think anybody has any problems with your character. I, they know you're a good, accomplished race driver. The budget of ra of racing has probably hurt you more than anything. I don't really think it's. Do you think it's a, a personal thing? No, I don't think it's personal. There, you know, there is some internal corporate politics that we played and get but the biggest thing is the recession has hurt it i was making pretty good steady progress and the recession has hurt it a little bit but fortunately dave has been willing to take a chance on me and and um he's a very good friend of mine now and i'm, I'm glad to be able to get it in the race for him if he got a big sponsor would he go full bore or is he, is oh he yeah he would he's put all his own money into it the last two years and he really didn't have the money to do it he went out on a limb and um I'm just glad to be able to give him some back. Sure. Yeah, you stuck it in the show, you'll get a little bit back. Well, that, I mean, you yeah. a, a driver, and it's like Gary Bentonhouse and Johnny Parsons, Poncho Carter, guys like that, and John, if you can make Indianapolis, you can make it through the You can make a living because yeah. the purse now is what it should be. It's like, you know, like 100 Well, you get 108, 110 grand if you... I mean, that's what last place, if you, you don't get all that. He gets his 40 or right. percentage or whatever, whatever it is. is. Right. But that's the one thing, you, you know, like when Parsons missed the race last year by you know, 30 feet when the motor comes. I mean, that's your whole season because you can't make that midget sprint car racing and you, and you know how no. go-kart racing doesn't pay much anymore. <laughs> the big problem is, at least from my standpoint, it gets you so nervous through the month is you end up depending on this race as a living. And that's hard because especially when you're driving old equipment, you know, you have to really sometimes hang it out just to get in. How do you keep it together for the race? How do you plan to keep that car together? You say it's old, you say the motors are tired. Well, we have a secret weapon in John Dick, our engineer. He ran Little Al's team last year as an engineer, and he was Lion Dyke's engineer when he won the Speedway with a 90 car. The chassis is very good. It's planted, and it's very rock solid. The motor is the, you know, the weak link. And we have a second car, which we ran, and it's actually faster. We're looking to sell it and purchase a new motor from Jim Wright, and hopefully it'll run all day. John Dick, he's used to going to stakes and stuff. Now that, that these guys take him to the White Castle until they, you know, finish in the top five, and it'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, we're very fortunate that he was, you know, willing to come here for very low dollars, and he deserves to be with a big team. He's he's good, an incredibly organized man. John, thanks very much for coming on with us. All right, it's my pleasure. Thank good you. Good luck this week. Me. Next we're, week, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Next week. <laughs> we still got another week yeah, of qualifying. Uh, don't to go, remind John. me. Don't remind me, Hut. All righty. We'll be back with more on Sports Locker right after this. Stay with us. Mike Ahern, Debbie Knox, Indiana's favorite news team, with Cliff Nicholson, Fred Khalil, and Mark Patrick on 24-Hour News 8 awarded Indiana's best newscast by the Associated Press. Wish TV's 24-hour News 8, recognized by Indiana's own and the AP as the first, the favorite, the best. 
Everything I know about cars. He only got one thing wrong. He never told me to bring my car to CarX for brakes. Yeah, I always went some other place. These guys are real pros. I get quality parts and a lifetime guarantee on my shoes and pads. Oh, I always went some other place. Dad, do you think you get expert work like this for so little at some other place? What other place? Rattle, rattle, thunder, clatter, boom, boom, boom. Don't worry, call the CarX man. We're back on Sports Locker and... Now here's Dick Ray with his best friend of the month. <laughs> the man that got the poll because he was on Sports Locker. He was on Sports Locker he last told week. They meant more to him than the poll. He was on Dick uh, Dick's show about eight times. <laughs> yeah. But he's having a great month. And like John Paul, he's really battled back after some hard times. You know, it's been a long time since Roberto Guerrero has had a racing accomplishment to celebrate. His career nearly came to a screeching halt with a practice crash that left him in a coma for 17 days back in 1987. But tonight, he's the fastest man in Speedway history, awarded today with all the spoils that go with winning the pole position in Indianapolis, a $100,000 bonus and a new StarCraft van. It all became official around 12.30 this afternoon when the remaining five drivers were unable to top this run yesterday at 232.482. Guerrero still in search of a full-time ride, hard to believe, on the IndyCar circuit, but he says having this happen has made it easier to cope with all those recent ups and downs. Well, Roberto, are you finally breathing easier? I think I will sleep tonight, Dick, finally. I, I don't think I, I closed my eyes at all last night. I'm kind of like that. It's, uh, you know, it was, I really would have been so disappointed if I lost it somehow, so it's a big relief. I'm really over the moon. It has to be uh, kind of the best of times and also a bittersweet moment for the team with what happened with uh, Jim today. Yeah, absolutely. That was a shame. That's the only thing that takes away from the from the poll, that, uh, you know, the problems that, that poor old Jim had. And it would have been really nice to have two green Quaker State cars on the front row, but we just have to work on, on the big day now. I know things got kind of rough in your racing career. Did you ever think it would come back to this level? Well, I always, you always, always have to hope. If you don't hope and try, then you will never be here. And uh, you know, at the moment things are going very well, and uh, you know, it's over the moon. I, again, you know, the thing is, uh, come May 25th, I'm back on the unemployment line. So my career is not exactly back up there yet. It's, it's right up there for, for Indianapolis, and then hopefully we can get something together for the race. What does it mean to be able to start up there? Well, it's great. I mean, obviously the. You know, all the just 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 starting the the Indianapolis 500 from the pole position is uh, it's something unbelievable. And then uh, as far as the race itself, it's always uh, you can get in a lot less trouble when you start up there than when you start in the middle of the pack. So that would be nice too. Of course, our congratulations to both Roberto and his wife Katie. Great couple there. That's right. That was a great win for him. Now, now we know he gets to keep the van, doesn't he? Yeah, here's the deal. Everybody that sees, oh, this guy won a million. Rick Mears won a million dollars last year. I know. Bird, they get or this guy wins hundred thousand dollars. That's not true 50%, at all. Fifty percent. Percent. No. Forty. Different guys have different percentages depending on how successful you are. And sometimes they negotiate. I remember when Tom Sneva won the poll one year, he took the van and and didn't have as much of a take then out of the money. Although the the money then PPG is the one that gives the money now, and they weren't doing that. They're the only ones that really stepped up and done that because the Speedway had took in about two million dollars. Saturday, and guess what the Speedway paid out? Yeah, I not know. much. Yeah. Peanuts, like five grand or something. So, it, thank, thankfully, PPG came along a few years ago and, and pumped a bunch of money in the purse and a hundred thousand dollars for the pollster to make this worth something. Okay, but son, get to the point now. How much of it is he going to get? Well, I, it depends. If he keeps, he keeps the van, he'll get ten, twenty, thirty, forty percent, maybe of the really? hundred thousand dollars. If I was negotiating for him, he'd get more though. I'd have him clutch the motor on a pace lap. <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh I man. Hey, now, Lee had a question for us, and, and you talked to him on the telephone. Right. He wanted to know if the Colts are maybe placing too much emphasis on Albert Bentley to carry the load running the ball, and maybe if they should go after a guy like Humphrey with Denver. Yeah, that's a good question. I think Lee may have called last week, didn't he? Or he, he hasn't been under a minicamp, though. I mean, 
Albert can do a lot of things. He can do a lot of things, but, you know, he's also coming back from a serious injury, and nobody would like Albert to succeed more than us. I mean, here he is, uh, you know, running the football right here and looking good. But when you get pads on, you take a hit, you play on turf, you get stuck. You know, Ray Donaldson's looking good, too. So I hope they both are able to come back. I hope we're able to come back with plays <laughs> of the day after this. Stay with us. <laughs> Kids Ask 8, involving kids in the news. The New England Journal of Medicine, the first word on the latest breakthroughs. Mike's Mailbag, your chance to critique our news. Fitness Reports, fit facts for living longer. The Highlight Zone, a unique look at the wild world of sports. Ahern at Large, commentary from Indiana's own Mike Ahern. For exclusive news and information you won't find anywhere else, count on 24-hour News 8, only on Wish TV. at the dance, right? And, and, and he walks over to me and he starts telling me all the you're gonna win. Huber here inviting you to Huber Chevrolet's 20th anniversary of our race sponsorship. We're leading the way with our annual pace setter sale featuring $900 to $1,300 rebates on Luminous S10 Blazers and Cavaliers. Huber, Chevy, and Wish TV 8 are giving away this limited edition race day print while supplies last. When you test drive any of our fine cars or trucks, including our luxurious Starcraft van line. So hurry into Huber Chevrolet today and pick up this fine poster from Channel 8 and Huber Chevrolet. Good people to go racing with. Win a trip to Walt Disney World, including a fabulous four-day premiere cruise. Pick up an entry form and official rules at participating Central Indiana Hardee's and Pickway Shoe Store locations. Then watch Wish TV's local news each weekday at noon and 5 p.m. Note the date, time, and Walt Disney World attraction featured in our live 500 festival reports. And you can be one of two winning families going to Walt Disney World from Wish TV and Coca-Cola. Oh, gosh, this guy's a cut-up. Hey, is Jimmy Vassar going to be safe at 218, uh, whatever, whatever? Well, he's going to be out there running his backup car every day, boys, and there's going to be a reason, because I think he's probably, that's probably going to be pretty close, because you heard John Paul say they weren't going to take anything under 220, and you count the cars and you think, hey, there's not enough cars to worry about if you make four laps, but that happened, didn't happen last year, because guys have a funny way of bringing cars out of the barn. And you know what? Speaking of coming out of the barn, look at these oh, guys good. in the barn. <laughs> yes. I'm glad you stopped right there. Nobody was seriously injured. Look at that dog doing a great job. Is Danny and guys driving that harness cart? <laughs> oh, My fault. For Robin Miller and Dick Ray, I'm Fred Khalil. Thanks for watching Sports Rocker. We'll see you tomorrow. From Wish TV, Channel 8, this is Indiana's own 24-hour news service. Good evening. I'm Tina Cosby. And city police are on the scene of a car motorcycle accident at this hour on the city's east side. One person is believed to have been critically injured. And in Nova Scotia, Canada today, rescue workers say chances are very slim that 15 trapped coal miners will be found alive. Earlier today, 11 bodies were found following an explosion earlier this weekend. Right now, it's 69 degrees downtown. This is your 24-hour news service. Zero percent financing is even a bigger deal when it's at Fredder. To get zero percent financing and Fredder prices, you've got to go to Fredder. Hi, I'm downtown Julie Brown here with an important message for all you teenagers out there. Check this sign out. If you're ever in trouble, this sign could save your life. This is the safe place sign. Go into any building or store where you see this. Inside will be people who care and who can help you out.